Have you ever tried to sit and play some Shenmue only to be greeted by this nuisance? Oh, not that ear-piercing screech. That's just because my VMUs don't have batteries in them. I mean this. The date and time setting. You see, the Dreamcast uses a rechargeable coin cell battery to keep track of time, and if you don't want all your save files dated November 27, 1998, you'll have to set the time and date each time you power the system on once the battery reaches the end of its life. And good luck playing Seaman, if, uh, that's your thing. Rather than simply replace the battery today, we're instead going to revise this system by installing a battery holder in its place. That way, we can install a new rechargeable battery, but we won't have to grab the soldering iron in another decade when this battery inevitably wears out. I'll start by turning the Dreamcast over and removing the modem. If you're lucky, you'll be removing the broadband internet adapter instead. But for now, I'm missing out on those Quake 3 lobbies that are still active. With the modem removed, you can see all four screws which hold the case together. I'll use a number two Phillips head screwdriver to remove them. Thankfully, these screws are identical, but you'll still want to separate them now because we'll be taking a few more screws out soon. Now, we can turn the Dreamcast over while holding the case together. The top should come off easily, and now we can see our battery. The board comes out easily by removing another four screws, and disconnecting the ribbon cable to the motherboard, and this connection to the fan. Now you can lift the board out. It helps to lift the back of it up before sliding it out of the faceplate for the controller sockets. I'll be the first to admit that I'm not the most skilled at soldering, but with the right tools and a solid understanding of the fundamentals, this should be a pretty easy task. If you'd like to brush up on your skills or learn basic soldering for the first time, I'd recommend watching this video on the subject before trying this yourself. I'm going to use some helping hands and a magnifying glass to make this easier. Luckily for you, I can use the magic of having another camera to give you a closer view instead. I'm using a desoldering wick to remove the old solder holding the battery to the board. On older joints like these, it can help to add a little fresh solder to the joint in order to take the rest off. Now that the solder is completely removed, the battery should simply pull out from the board. Any ideas? I bought my battery holder and battery from Console 5. I'll put some links to these in the description. They make it very easy to find the parts you need for all sorts of repairs and modifications on old consoles. They also sent me this candy with my order, which I will now enjoy while doing this repair. I'm going to clean the pads on this board with some running alcohol before installing the battery holder. This seems like a bad time to get anything sticky all over your work. Maybe candy isn't the best idea right now.
The battery holder fits in the same holes left by the old battery. The orientation is the same, so just match the legs up with the holes and make sure the holder sits evenly on the other side of the board before soldering it in. When soldering components on a board, heat the pad and leg with the soldering iron and touch the solder to the pad until the solder melts. Do not touch the solder directly to the iron tip, as the solder will be less likely to form a strong connection between the pad and the leg. Once you've soldered the battery holder, you may want to trim the legs with some flush cutters if the legs are especially long on yours. Now we can reconnect the board to the rest of the system. This looks like a regular CR2032, but it isn't. Do not use a CR2032 in this holder unless you've modified the board to accept that type of cell. This ML2032 is rechargeable like the original part, and the board circuitry applies a voltage to the battery while the system is powered on, so these directions are not appropriate for single-use cells. Reassembly is so easy that I'm going to do it super fast for you here. Turn it back over and reinstall the four screws to secure the case back together. Finally, reattach your modem or broadband adapter if you're cooler than I am. We're ready to test this out now. One thing I don't see mentioned often is that the Dreamcast manual recommends leaving the system on for two hours to charge a depleted clock battery. This is a great opportunity to kick back with your favorite underrated Dreamcast game of choice. You've earned it. W wait, is the Dreamcast library still underrated or is everyone just used to saying it's underrated? The real test will be seeing if the console remembers the date and time later this evening. There we go! One less barrier to enjoying your Dreamcast. Now, if only there was something to be done about those VMU batteries. 
I'd like to give a special thank you to Rasculus for his blog post on this mod. The overview and parts list were indispensable in preparing to make this video, and I've left a link to the page in the description. Thanks for watching. Please let me know your thoughts on this video in the comments, and share it with someone you think would enjoy it. I'm Alex from Restore Revise, and I'll see you next time.